Uh, so next up we have Ash, Ash, Ashwin White Church, um, who has, I think, been to at least three or four open hardware summits. I've spoken to him on a number of occasions. Ash, Ashwin runs a company called uh, Proto Central Electronics, which is focused on developing open source hardware for healthcare applications. He is a software and hardware engineer by education and professions with a master's degree in both. Come on down, Ashwin. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. And do, I, and do I just click this? Okay, I got that working. Um, so, uh, thanks for the introduction. My name is Ashwin. Uh, I run a company called Proto Central, where we research on uh, we we make these devices for uh, for open source medical applications. Before we go into what that is, um, let me just now uh, let me just start with. Uh, I tend to overrun my uh, the time given, so um, so I'm going to jump right into the topic. So this is the story of two projects that we had in 2017, and uh, just for proving a point and <laughs> just for fun, we entered it into the we we put it up on Hackaday. Um, and we entered the Hackaday Prize 2017, and uh, we won uh, two of the prizes, one for second prize for the Healthy Pie and one for Hearty Patch. So, so let me just talk a little bit about these projects. So first up is Healthy Pie, and uh, uh, here we just wanted to show, so my background is in uh, electronic engineering and uh, biomedical engineering. So I started out as a biomedical engineer. So um, so the point of this project was to show people, I mean, that patient monitors or the things that you find in hospitals do not have to be black boxes. Right? So we built this uh, device to look like a patient monitor, but it's built on a healthy, on a Raspberry Pi. Um, it's it's actually a hat for the Raspberry Pi, uh, which sits on top of the Raspberry Pi and turns it into this is the same display as the Raspberry Pi, and uh, the, so that's how this project started and that's how this entire adventure of uh, our started in uh, open source uh, medical hardware. Um, so the right so that this version was V3 in 2017. This was based on the SAMD21 microcontroller, which was quite popular at that time. Then we went to V4, and the latest is V5, which has got an RP2040. So we still get to call it a uh, we still get to call it Healthy Pi, although it's not based. It doesn't really need a Raspberry Pi anymore. Um, so project number two um, was called Hearty Patch, and uh, this was also in 2017 the Hackaday Prize. And uh, this is a wearable uh, single lead ECG device. So this was one of our first uh, trials that you see. Um, it 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 sits on the chest and uh, it gives you um, single lead ECG. Um, so the applications of this were. Um, some obvious applications were in cardiology, that is uh, AFib, atrial fibrillation detection, and uh, an interesting side uh, uh, use case was uh, heart rate variability monitoring and uh, whether we could relate it to um, mental state in, in uh, or emotions. So yeah. So, so we, we we just introduced these two products on Hack Day as as just projects, and then looking at the enormous amount of interest that they generated, we thought, okay, let's turn these into products. And uh, we were faced with the obvious choice. I mean, whether we should. I mean, w on one hand, 
to make these into actual medical devices, you will need a lot of resources. And uh, on the other hand, we were also worried about, okay, we should still keep some of this open source. So, uh, so we had these two options. Um, so, so we tried, we tried both of them for, uh, for both of the product. Um, so for Hearty Patch, the, the wearable uh, ECG monitor device, we decided to accept uh, external funding, raise uh, investments, and uh, commercialize. So this allowed us to do uh, immediate development, testing, and certification. The testing and certification is probably the most uh, expensive part in uh, medical devices. And um, so once you do that, um, approval part, then you can actually reach patients who are in need of this product. And there is more funding to do sales and marketing, and uh, it's, the scaling is much faster. But again, um, the negatives are, so don't get to share designs anymore because the investors don't like it. Um, so every meeting comes with an NDA to be signed. And um, yeah, exchange of ideas is not just limited, it doesn't exist. Um, so it was also a challenge to find uh, investors for this kind of a project because the first thing anyone asked us, we, we, we just went to a few of these meetings and, uh, and this finding investment thing is totally new for me at that time. So first thing was they asked us for where are your patents? So we said, we don't have any patents and we don't like patents. <laughs> and uh, people didn't like that. And investors don't like to hear that. Um, and so most of the meetings, they wouldn't even talk to us if we say no patents. Right? And second thing is they asked, this is uh, again a term that I learned after I went into this investment world, this freedom to operate. They asked, OK, what if somebody sues you? Um, that you are infringing on their idea. Again, we had no idea, and uh, but we got to learn, and uh, but we still uh, found some understanding investors who saw the value and uh, who were ready to live without the no patents issue. So, so Hearty Patch became a company called Patch Inc. Um, we incorporated in Boston. I, I am from India. I mean, Proto Central Electronics is based in India. Um, but our investors were based in Boston. So we incorporated this company in Boston, uh, although our first market was still India because it's relatively easy to penetrate. Um, so, so that's what became of Hearty Patch. And uh, and yes, it is right now available in the Indian market. It is so it's it's morphed into a more of a cardiac recording device where uh, it monitors AFib and it also does continuous recording for um, detection of cardiac issues. So if you talk about the evolution of the device, so the left side is what we had as the open source uh, device. And and yeah, I would love to talk about product development, but it's it's all redacted. <laughs> so it's really redacted. So so we go into this black box and we ended up with patch. Um, and uh, this still exists. And I don't think my investors would be very happy <laughs> if I were to talk about what happened in the middle. Uh, so this is one project. So Healthy Pi, coming back to Healthy Pi, uh, this is still open. Um, I, I mean, all the project, uh, including the hardware, the software, the firmware, GUI, everything is on GitHub. Uh, I will also share the GitHub uh, uh, repo names for this. So how we managed to build these, I mean, uh, as far as reaching customers was concerned, 
we decided to run crowdfunding campaigns. So all of them were on crowd supply because they are the only people who understood uh, the value of open source crowdfunding campaigns. And we launched version 3, 4, and 5 very recently in uh, 2024 and 23, actually. And uh, right now, we are also working on a new wearable device called Healthy Pipe Move, which I'm wearing on my, a very early version, which I'm wearing on me right now. And I'll be happy to share anything about that. It's still not launched. It's in the pre-launch phase. But uh, all of this is open. So um, yeah, just a quick evolution. The first one was built on the SAMD21. Uh, the, we started with revision 3 because the 1 and 2 failed. So we started with 3. And uh, 4 was based on the SP32 again. And revision 5 was based on two chips. One was the RP2040 and an ESP32 for communication. And uh, the newest one, Healthy by Move, is wearable. It looks like a watch, but it's not a watch. In fact, it can't even tell the time. But uh, <laughs> but it can measure your, uh, 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 it, it can do, I mean, I, I can talk more about this later. But it's based on uh, NRF 5340, and it uses the Zephyr platform. Now, coming to Zephyr, right? So this is. Uh, Zephyr is kind of like our go-to platform right now because it's uh, uh, when during COVID-19 when the chip shortage started, we were looking for we were stuck to the Atmel platform, and um, now Zephyr offered a way that okay, we 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 use the same source code, we use the same drivers but switch to a different architecture. So that's where we got this uh, idea. And uh, as far as I, I think, uh, so whatever Arduino did for hardware and the education field, I think Zephyr does the same for production grade devices. And it's incredibly stable. So this is what it means for us. So we have our Healthy Pi code base. We have drivers for each of our sensors. We have our algorithms for calculating heart rate, SpO2, and all that. And on top of these are different devices. So in this case, Healthy Pi 5, which is based on the uh, Raspberry Pi RP2040, uh, shares the same code base as the latest one, which is based on a Nordic chip. And uh, our algorithms remain the same. I mean, and, and they all compile natively. And uh, yeah, we are also having a new product called Healthy Pi EEG, which is which is just coming up. And we also intend to do more application-specific versions and future versions, and uh, even um, even platforms that other people can build on. Um, yeah, software, firmware design um, is uh, mainly on processing. And uh, right now, we've gotten used to Flutter also. Flutter also seems to be uh, pretty good. Uh, <coughs> so coming to the safety regulations, right? So, so OK, medical open source, medical devices are great. But um, what about safety? And uh, what about regulation? This is a question that I. Uh, keep getting asked very often, and uh, are they? Uh, I mean, I also keep getting asked whether they're legal, right? So depends on how you define legal, but uh, mostly, as far as safety is concerned, um, so we do we do subject all our devices to the basic safety uh, regulations, which are these IEC standards that are here. I'm not going to read them out and also risk management. Mm. So after you finish, a, uh, um, I mean, once you do a risk management of a particular device, um, is there enough risk that is mitigated by the uh, 
by whatever measures you've taken and is that risk acceptable and we also get to use the for investigation and use only uh, label so that we don't have to go through uh, regulations but that is another story so and that th this is the safety part and next come the regulations part. this is a different animal altogether because um, for example in the US the FDA requires that every uh, marketable device needs an FDA 510k pre-market approval and and it's not easy uh, especially for smaller companies because um, because most of the FDA is um, geared towards larger companies and we, we really don't uh, so for example this is a deficiency list of what were we applied for and uh, we got 48 questions back saying that okay address all these first um, which really didn't make a lot of sense to us but yeah that, that's how it works so I thought I'll share some compliance testing things the, so these are basic compliance uh, what we do um, for example this is just one example where I've showed EMI and EMC how it can fail so uh, during EMI EMC we let design creep come into the way and uh, we let it go until the last minute and <coughs> you see those two peaks there and um, that that fails the complete test so we had to redesign the entire thing uh, yeah I, I have only a few more minutes left so I'm just going to run through this so this is healthy by five only uh, so you can see that the latest one is 5.7 and that's the one that got launched the reason is because we went through all of these with several different mistakes um, yeah we still make mistakes healthy by move this is the latest one um, I don't want to go through all the details but uh, I can show you the device when I'm seeing you around here so um, coming to the big question right are these medical devices realistic is this a realistic and sustainable thing to be working on <coughs> um, so uh, this is a platform I mean I this is not our work but this is uh, called Eubora this is a funded project of the European Union um, so where I learned the first uh, term OSMD it's called open source medical devices so I was a part of the Eubora uh, advisory team um, so they, they are based in I mean the main uh, team is based in the University of Pisa in Italy. Um, so they have a platform, right? So a platform that can advise you of, uh, I mean, uh, the care providers can actually put in their uh, requirements um, and uh, the people who want to work on it uh, go through this uh, platform that also advises you of whatever uh, is required to maintain the safety and the risk management for uh, so this is courtesy of our friends at PISA uh, so this is one of their success stories uh, talking about things uh, medical devices being our open source medical devices being legal um, I just need one more minute <laughs> um, so this is this is one of their first products and uh, this is for breast cancer screening and uh, they've designed a, a device that can actually detect lumps in the breast tissue and uh, this started as an idea um, but uh, it started as a paper that was published but now it is a product so and this is still completely open source so I think I'm going to skip this um, <coughs> if uh, you have any questions you can email me and these two are our healthy pie uh, repositories that I promised. Thank you.